Hi, and welcome to Marketing Optimization with Alex Designs. I'm your host, Alex Harris, and today we're chatting all about app development and marketing with Carter Thomas of BlueCloudSolutions.com. How are you doing, Carter? Good, Alex. How are you doing? Perfect. Carter has built and sold 400 plus iPhone and iPad apps in his first two years as an iOS marketer and is now gunning to be a top mobile game publisher in the industry. To get started, we're going to jump right into it. What would be your top tips when cr- you, you've developed the app? What would be your top tips to really go out there and start marketing it? Okay, so it's a, it's a big question, obviously. But So let's say you've already developed an app. The number one tip I would do is, or I would give you is to you know, be patient a little bit. Right, because I think a lot of people go into the marketplace and they they think that there's an exact strategy or there's an exact blueprint for each individual app. And my my tip would be that I see a lot of people they line up everything and say, all right, this is my exact plan and this is what's going to happen, and it doesn't work out the way they want, and they like they lose all their fire, they give up, you know, it, it's it's kind of over. So the biggest tip when you have an app you developed it is realize that it's it's not going to do exactly what you think it's going to do. And to realize that that's part of the process of, of releasing an app, and that's just going to make you better. It's going to make your app stronger, and everything's going to work out. But I, would, I see a lot of people that spend all this time and all this money developing apps. They launch it. It doesn't do what they want, and they throw their hands up and say, oh, you know, ah, this isn't for me. You know, this market's not what everyone says it is. And that's probably the, the, the number one thing you shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, people, you know, with a website or an app, it doesn't matter. They build this field of dream. They just think, you know, they're going to create it. And all of a sudden, these people are going to flock to it. It's it's yeah. really about, you know, building that audience and, and going through the, the hustle and the grind to, to get it out there, get PR and, and figure out where, where your sweet spot is. Mm-hmm. So l- let's tell a little bit about uh, people about you. How did you get started doing apps? I got started with apps uh, a few years ago when I was working at a startup on my lunch breaks, I would go out with this database uh, developer who's a contractor and we would just sit around at lunch and, and come up with ideas and I would do a little design, he would develop them. It was very informal. Uh, a couple years later, I was doing internet marketing on my own and I said, I got to give this a shot. You know, apps are just, it's 2011, you know, it seems like a really cool business and I <clears throat> was like, all right, what am I going to do first? And I realized that if I tried to build an app from scratch, I, I, you know, I'd go crazy because I can't, you know, there's no way I can wrap my head around a 12 month project or whatever, or spend five thousand dollars. And with, with websites, with internet marketing, what I realized is that if I bought a template of a website and just like redesigned it, it was a, it was a great looking website that was way cheaper and it was done in like two weeks. And I was like, well, why don't I just do this for apps? You know, like why am I trying to build an app from scratch? I don't know if it's going to even work. And so I started doing that where I would go out and I would find templates. I would talk to developers and I would get templates and just redo the graphics to make new apps. And that, that's essentially how it all began, where I would just go out, find these source code templates, and then you know, turn them into my own apps and my own games. And that's, that's how it all got started. Yeah, and that's really why I wanted to bring on you on the show because – you know, 400 plus iPhone and iPad apps, you obviously have a lot, I have a lot to learn and, and teach the audience. But I want to talk about three things in particular. The placement in iTunes or, you know, Android, if you want to talk about that, creating an onboarding process inside of your app, turning those users maybe into leads or possible um, upselling or in-store, in-play apps, uh, in-store purchases, in-app purchases. Mm -hmm. And lastly, flipping those apps, selling the apps and actually maybe getting acquired. Sure. So to get started, the placement in iTunes, what would be your best tips to get the best placement in iTunes? So the placement in iTunes, the best way to to think about that is in terms of metadata. So if you you know much about the web, um, it comes down to things like title tags, uh, how you write the copy, how you choose your keywords, and then just like basic design stuff in terms of uh, icon and screenshots and all that sort of stuff, which is called the publishing side of, of, of the app store. You know, like what people are going to see on your iTunes page. And then you can get into what category you, you place it in and things like that. And a lot of that comes down to just research, especially on the keyword side. You, you try to find 
um, different opportunities and different places that you can really capitalize on. And that's, you know, going back to your original question about what's the best way to, to, you know, take your app. A lot of it comes down to before you even develop it, you know, like what keywords am I trying to capitalize on with this app? And when you're developing your app, that's, that can really begin a lot of that, um, that process for you. So in terms of placing it in the app store, you want to place it in, um, same thing like with a niche market website. You want it to be on a, a high, like a medium to high volume keyword that doesn't have a lot of competition. And that just comes down to research and being able to, to find, you know, use the tools, whether it be Google or some of these online app store optimization tools. And um, that helps you a lot. And that will help you rank better for different keywords and you can track it all and things like that. So in terms of ranking and, and placing in the app store, that's going to be your best bet. Yeah, well, a follow-up question. Uh, sure. I, I did have, um, I did hear you talk about specifically optimizing your your games or your apps that are branded for a- advertisers. Mm-hmm. Can, you, can you speak about that that strategy? Yeah, totally. So, uh, very, you know, really like advertising one hundred and one, right? So, big game spends a certain amount of money. They put it on an ad network, and then. We come in with with our games and we sell them traffic. So for every person I can get to install their game, they're going to pay me, let's say, three bucks. Now, there's a lot that goes into that that mechanic on that transfer. Um, the number one, uh, whatever you call it, like um, indicator or whatever, the correlation thing that makes it the install rates the highest is if you can theme your game as similar as you can to that. So let's say Candy Crush is a good example. If you make a match three game that looks just like Candy Crush, the chances of you getting people to install Candy Crush when you advertise it are massively higher. And so if you can go and you can find the games that are, are spending the most money on their ad networks, and you can create games that have massive install rates for those top advertisers, you, you know, you're going to build a game anyway. You might as well build a game that's going to get the most money for those installs. and It's going to convert the best for your top advertisers. So that was a big strategy for me early on is that some of the biggest advertisers were companies like Pocket Gems and Tiny Co and Zynga, like companies making these animal builder games. And so I was just making like really cute animal runner games that were easy to make. But when I would advertise a Pocket Gems game, the install rates were, were huge because it was like, it, it looked like it was the same company almost. And that was a really good strategy. Um, it still is in a lot of ways. Um, to be able to funnel traffic into the right apps and make make way more money than if you just oh, I think this is cool or this is cool, it's a lot better to say, okay, if I build on this theme, the traffic I sell is going to be much more valuable. So that's a, that was a big part of it. Yeah, that funnel process is, is what I really love to really optimize the experience. And, and I want to talk about the onboarding process. You know, that's kind of a, a, a buzzword for funnels that you're really doing to drive leads or revenue from your particular apps. What have you learned from really creating apps to give some best tips for, you know, maybe it's not when you launch your first beta app, but that maybe that those next couple iterations to generate leads and revenue or email addresses in general? Totally. That's a, and that's a like, massive opportunity. And I think that in, in the app world, that's going to be one of the next big things that happens is this idea of turning apps into lead generation models. I think that that's highly underutilized right now. And the people that are doing it um, are like some games are doing it, but they're doing it in one way, and then some apps are doing it in another way. And I'll explain both. Games are more about like um, they upsell you in the store, and they 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 will do database marketing within your. They'll watch who, your behavior. They'll watch your analytics, and they'll say, "Hey, this person spends a lot of money. Let's give them more rewards. Let's give them some free sales." And there's all these tools that can track all these users and just upsell them on in-app currencies. Like, hey, we're going to give you 500 free coins because you're a preferred member or VIP or whatever it may be. And so games, like you onboard, especially when you onboard with Facebook into a game, they put you into a database, and I've done this with a few slot machine games, and you can just track all the users, segment out the ones you want, and just hit them with promotions or whatever it may be, um, and collect as much information as you want. And that can give you like 30, 40% increase in revenue very easily just by marketing to the, your user base. So that's what games are doing, you know, and they, they work not only with that side, they do push notifications, they'll do pop-ups, sales, and things like that, but it's all about nurturing their user base and selling more currency within the game. And that's, 
that system is becoming more and more advanced. You see ad networks uh, releasing new SDKs that have stores and open, open source uh, technologies for that. And that's, that's becoming like best practice for uh, uh, games. Now, the bigger opportunity I see is in other apps, which is like lead generation for things like affiliate marketing, <clears throat> for CPA models, for anything that's in that world. And what happens is people will log in, they'll create a user account, whether it be through faith, Facebook, through just like, you know, put in your username and email, things like that. All that email gets sent back to a, you know, in a database somewhere, a marketing database. And now you've got a, an external email campaign that's happening. So not only are you using uh, your Pandora app, now you've got an email campaign coming at you too saying, hey, you know, we haven't seen you in three days. We've got some recommendations for you. Why don't you come back and, and join? <laughs> one thing I did back in the day, one of my first apps is, um, I, I can't believe, I haven't, t- I haven't told a whole lot of people about this, bodybuilding.com. You know, it's like the, one of the biggest affiliate marketers in the, in the world. Back in like 2010 or 2011, they, you would type in bodybuilding into the store and they would be the only one to come up. And their app, bodybuilding comp, like a massive e-commerce site, their app was like this crappy fitness app. It was like, hey, here's a 10 crunches you can do. And I was like, people want to buy stuff, you know? So I built like a basic app that just parsed in um, an affiliate like store, right, with all my links. And I would go, I just released this app. And all it was is you could just buy everything on the bodybuilding.com store. And I was getting all these affiliate commissions like that. And I started collecting email addresses and remarketing to people. And eventually they, you know, they sent me a letter and said, hey, you can't really you can't do that. But that opportunity is there. And that's something that very, very few people are taking advantage of. The idea of, you know, getting insurance leads or, you know, selling AWeber signups or anything. Like you can really build these apps and get creative on how you capture data that all gets stored in a database with numbers that are like, you know, way bigger than the internet can give you. Uh, because it's just the competition isn't nearly as big as, as the web quite yet. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, I've, you know, I've done a few with some games, and like I said, it's, it's massively powerful. And the ability to collect email addresses, I mean, you can build a list. You know, I, I had a friend, actually, last week, he, he released a couple, uh, like the Flappy Birds like clones, like the new ones that are coming out that you see all over the charts. And he got, I don't know, let's say 100,000 downloads. He collected like 18,000 email addresses off of that, of people just being like, hey, I want to know when there's updates coming out. Next time, next time he has a game that he wants to release, he's got 18,000 people. He could just press, press, hey, download today and shoot himself up the chart. So stuff like that is just, I mean, the, we're the tip of the iceberg. Now, now, one follow-up question. What type of tools or software do developers use to kind of track that, you know, uh, a lot of my audience does A/B testing and um, funnel optimization. H- how do you track making those changes or seeing that data? Totally. So in the in the uh, in the mobile world, there's tons of analytics tools. You know, Flurry is probably the biggest biggest name in mobile analytics. Uh, Google Analytics is actually making a move into mobile, which is cool. One of the tools I use a lot is it's a company called Playhaven. It's a gaming advertising network. And they actually have what's called Playhaven Tools, which is you hook in the analytics, but it also allows you to hook in uh, pricing stores into the, uh, into the in-app purchases. So you can, you can segment people not only on the analytics, you can start to sell them like, hey, this coin pack is on sale today, or you know, we're, we're going to give you a free rewards gift. So they've done a good job. A company called Chartboost, which is another gaming network, they have this store and everything else. But in terms of raw analytics, you know, you're talking Flurry, uh, Swerve. Google Analytics, AppBoy, uh, Localytics, like, you know, all those. And they'll give you essentially Google Analytics for your game with, you know, session length, with demographic info, retention, lifetime value, all that sort of stuff. Oh, that's really interesting. I'll look into some of those, uh, those tools. Sure. So, so, so we talked about increasing your placement inside of iTunes and, and getting more exposure. The onboarding process, generating leads and, and revenue from the app in particular. Now let's talk about now you have some traction with your app. What, what would be some tips that you've learned from flipping those apps or just getting acquired? So once you, yeah, once you get the apps up and running, you've got a few, um, you have a few options. Okay. And so for anyone out there, to, uh, if you don't know um, anything about me, I made about 110 apps and then I sold them for about 200,000 bucks. 
And so, and then I still, you know, I've, I've made more and more apps than that. So I've got a little bit of experience on not only the owning the apps themselves, but also like selling the apps or versus, you know, turning the apps into other IP or whatever you want to talk about. So once you get an app that's up and running, you know, you've got a few options. One is that you just say, all right, I'm going to dedicate some more time to this and I'm going to create an update strategy and I'm going to really nurture this user base and see if I can grow the audience organically and with, with push notifications and all the things we talked about. Like just kind of cr- make that app bigger and bigger. It becomes a bigger project for you. That's one and that's what a lot of developers tend to do. Second is <clears throat> you sell it. So what you do is you package it up and um, the best – best lesson I got out of that deal was that you really want to sell the model. Like you don't really want to sell the app itself. So because 95% of people that are going to buy this app don't know anything about apps and they don't want to know anything about apps. So what you're going to sell them is like, all right, here's the cash flow. Here's the development team. Here's the standard operating procedures on how to maintain this app. Here's the update strategy. And almost like anyone can do it type of situation. And that's how they're going to be. They're going to walk in and say, all right, I can put my my summer intern on this and he can, he can keep this going for and like grow it organically. So when you want to exit, that's what you really want to sell. And then the third thing is that let's say you make a, a few apps and um, you know, they were just kind of like random tests and you do them and you, you release them into the marketplace and they do pretty well, but they're not big enough to update. It's no problem to just say, all right, well, I'm just going to let them go and they're going to keep printing money while I go and focus on other stuff. And that's like that's a very popular thing to do, especially with smaller apps and smaller games, is that you put them out there, they do well, and you're like, all right, well, it's 10, 15 bucks a day. Like, it's not really worth me updating all the time, but I'm, I can't really sell it. So I might as well just, hey, it's in my portfolio. It's just going to be a cash play. And that's, that's just kind of how it goes. Well, some really great information. I'm just getting a ton of ideas myself. It's, uh, it, it, it's, there's a lot of information. You should probably have to go back and listen to us a couple of times to really digest a lot of that stuff but you can also check out Carter on his blog bluecloudsolutions.com and where he not only talks about apps and mobile development but also about personal growth mindset and entrepreneurship let's close by telling people maybe your twitter and how people can find out more about you yeah the best way so if you go to blue cloud watch your blog posts um yeah on twitter i'm pretty active so there's a link at the top of the blog twitter.com slash carter thomas or if you go to facebook my facebook page is uh, facebook slash blue cloud i think it's blue cloud solutions but there's a link on the website as well and those are those are typically the best ways to connect and then if anyone ever has any you know specific questions there's a contact form on the blog for um you know consulting or masterminds or, or coaching or anything like that um and i mean i'm always open to to connecting with people. I love talking to people. So uh, yeah, I encourage you guys to check it all out. Perfect. Thanks a lot for your time, Carter. Thank you for watching the Marketing Optimization Podcast with Alex Designs. Please remember to subscribe to all of the videos in my YouTube channel. Thank you.